I want to be absolutely clear, I don't want to fill this channel up with uh, repair and renovations of uh, vintage radios, interesting though they are. I do want to get on with the, my core aim of building and designing some valve-based circuits. Um, however, when I do get an opportunity to work on an interesting project, I will cover it. And to be honest, I've still got a lot to learn when it comes to valve circuitry and valve radios. So I was given the opportunity really to look at three vintage radios from a friend. I'm not doing them for free. Uh, I'll be doing them for mates rates, that's for sure. And we chose initially to look at the Bush VHF 61 from the mid 1960s and sorry, mid 1950s. And that radio has VHF channel. Um, and so it can be really useful today still because there's still lots of uh, coverage on VHF. Um, so that's what I'm going to look at in this uh, video is the repair and the renovation of that particular radio. The Bush VHF 61 was first sold in 1956. This was soon after the first VHF radio broadcast for the UK in 1955. I'm sure many manufacturers would have had designs ready to go for that date. This was an expensive item at £27. That's about three weeks of the average wage back then. It's a well-featured model with connections for a gramophone pickup and an external speaker. So I finally got the um, Bush VSF61 on the bench after a bit of a delay. And this is just the initial visual inspection. I've already taken the back off uh, just to see what it's like inside. And uh, if it's just spin it around, fairly weighty beast. Um, you might be able to see that there's a fair amount of dust in there. Uh, I'll get some close-ups so you can see what's going on there. That tells me that there's nobody's really been inside the back. Uh, it was supposed to be working last time it was um, used um, and just switched off and never used again. So hopefully there's not too much to do. So my plan now is to get it out of the case, build a cradle for it so I can work on it without risk of damage to the chassis, uh, give it a good clean up, further visual inspection, and then I'll check out the transformers and some major components. If I'm satisfied, then I'll power it up under control conditions with a current limiter, uh, just to see if it's actually basically working, uh, and it'll help me uh, in the troubleshooting side of things. Um, hopefully it's just gonna be recapping um, the system where I need to, um, but we'll see. So it's just six bolts holding the chassis in the case, uh, four in the base and two in the back. And once I've got the chassis out, you can see it's pretty filthy. And after the initial cleanup, I was in a better position to start the visual inspection. My next task was to build a wooden cradle or frame for the radios to hold it. Uh, it means I can orient the chassis upside down or back to front so I can actually work on it. Also gives me a chance to turn it upside down and have a look at the uh, components in the base of the chassis. So I've constructed this frame to hold the uh, radio chassis so I can move it around quite safely and um, turn it upside down as well to do work on there with everything in place. So it means I can change a few components and test it and then change a few and test it. Uh, I was just glad to get this ferrite rod in place. Um, that was just rattling around on the bench. I was really concerned that that was gonna get broken, uh, but I feel I'm in a good place now. Um, next steps are to do some tests on the transformer uh, both the mains transformer and the output transformer as well. Another visual inspection, now it's all cleaned up, just to make sure nothing's amiss. Um, then I'll probably power it up under control conditions just to see what the status of the uh, radio is, whether it's basically working or not. Still going to change the capacitors because this needs to be run on 
I want to get it ready so it's run on a daily basis. And um, I don't want to do that with wax paper capacitors or old electrolytics in place. It'll just go eventually. Um, so that's where I'm at. So I've given the radio a visual inspection and there's just one small capacitor which I've noticed a little nick in the corner with. So I'll probably change that out. Um, just want to do some basic checks on the main transformer, just on the primary winding. Uh, just to see if, uh, and I'm getting some resistance there, 24 ohms. So that's not dead short. Um, and the other thing I can do is, I've seen a lot of people injecting signals into the um, output transformer. I'm going to do that. I'm not sure really if the merits of actually doing that because there's a lot of radio between the mains and the output transformer, but we'll do that anyway. So I've just got my um, signal generator on there. And I think you can just pick up a tone there. I'll just give it a bit more amplitude. So that basically means the uh, the output transformer is working as well. There's probably not too many more checks I can do. I'll probably do some work on the secondary um, winding of the mains transformer, and then I think we're in a good position to actually power this on. Uh, but if I do power it on, it'll be uh, under control conditions. Okay, so it's time to turn the radio on. And uh, what I'll do, I'll just go to medium wave first. I think um, it's come on the dim bulb. I've got um, a current limiter on this. Let's turn a bit of volume up. Uh, some tuning, so we can get anything. That's encouraging. defensive game yeah so there's only one radio station on medium wave at the moment so that's uh, that's good so that's encouraging let's go and try long wave noisy switches let's we'll try and sort those i'm not expecting to pick anything up on medium wave i'm just listening to the background noise and to me that's probably working uh vhf So it may be the aerial. I've got a, an improvised aerial at the back. Doesn't sound too healthy. Like I say, it could be the aerial. Uh, we'll just be a little bit careful there. So, um, yeah. Um, there's obviously some issues there to work through um, and we'll just see how we get on. So it's time to order some parts. Uh, I think I'll just need some capacitors. There's lots of multi-paper capacitors in there so we'll get those replaced and also electrolytics. Uh, so it's time to get ordering and just wait for the parts. So all the parts that I think I need have arrived plus the mains lead and lots of capacitors in there and I've got some spare ones as well. Um, but it brings me to a discussion point around capacitors in these old valve circuits because there's some very high voltages in here and it's really important to match the working voltage of the uh, capacitor with the needs of the circuit uh, as well as the capacitance value. And a lot of people will say, and they take a safe route and say, when you take a, a component out, you must replace it with one that has a working voltage which is the same or higher. Uh, and, and that's safe uh, advice, it's good advice, um, but it's not strictly true. What you need to do is put a capacitor in which is appropriate for the needs of the circuit. A manufacturer, especially in this case, would use 150 volt rated capacitors in parts of the circuit which only reach a potential of about two volts especially in the good circuits here and um, that's what i've done the thing is the the higher the voltage of the capacitor the more expensive it is yeah I've 
I've looked at the circuit diagram and, and done some checks on here, and you see voltages of um, 2 volts, 4 volts, 10 volts in parts of the circuit. You don't really need 150 volt capacity there. You can use something that's pretty standard from the microelectronic range. So that's going to help you reduce costs. You just need to be very aware and very sure. Um, but it's also a good way of actually getting to know the circuit, just looking at the, the schematics and also doing some checks before you actually do any changes and just make sure that you're within those uh, safe working voltage ranges. So I'm going to conclude part one. In part two, I'll do some benchmarking of the radio and start the process of um, changing the capacitors and getting into a working state and addressing any of the faults that we see along the way. And if you like these videos, then don't forget to subscribe. Um, it's really appreciated. Uh, otherwise, uh, catch you in part two.